In today's video, I show you how to install and configure SyncThing on Windows, but running it as a service. I've had several reports that SyncThing does not stay running on Windows, and that it only works if you're logged in and run the software every time you boot up. I figured I would do a follow-up video and explain how to take care of those two issues on Windows. Let's get SyncThing set up as a service on Windows. To start with, let's take a look at the normal way of installing SyncThing on Windows. So to do that, let's go to sync thing.net slash downloads. And here you'll find the sync thing downloads for the different operating systems. Scroll down a little bit. We're looking for Windows here. There it is. It's the Windows Intel AMD 64-bit version. We'll click on that. There it is. Open it up and you run it. You'll see the command prompt window back here running. Let me drag over the internal page for it. And you'll see it's working fine. If we go back here and close out this command prompt window, hit refresh and you see it's no longer working. To get to work again, we'd have to run this again, go through the same process. It's kind of a pain if you want to use it all the time and you just expect it to be running. Let me show you a better way of doing it. We're going to install it as a Windows service. All right, so what I'm going to do is jump over to Bill Stewart's GitHub page, and I'll leave a link for this in the description, so you can just go grab it from there. And what he's done is he's created it as a service, so it makes it a lot easier for us. If you look over here on the right-hand side, you'll find releases as of today's recording, the latest release is 1.29.1. So go ahead and click onto there and open it up. And there you're going to find three different files here. The one we're looking for is the syncthing-windows-setup.exe. So we'll click on that to download it. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and open up the folder that it's in. And you'll see that it's right here. I'm going to right click on this and run as an administrator. If you get this warning window, go ahead and click on more info and then run anyway. Then at the UAC window, it wants you to verify whether or not you want to run it. We do, so go ahead and hit yes. All right, so at this point, you should get a window that pops up saying select install mode. If you get that window, you want to choose the option to install for all users. Every time I've installed it, that's not happened. I don't know if it's just something on my machine or if it's because I've already ran SyncThing as a regular Windows program. I'm not sure the issue why, but let me show you how to get around that. You'll see this message here saying it's already installed, but it wants us to run it with a slash all users command line option. So let me show you how to do that. However, if yours has the select install mode, hang tight and we'll pick back up on the installation in a moment. If that didn't come up for you and you need to install by command line, let's go do that now. I'm going to hit OK to get out of here. I'm going to go back a level so we're at the downloads folder. I'm going to right click on it and select open in terminal. You'll see we're currently at my downloads folder, which is where I put this sync thing service file at. So here I'm going to type out sync thing. I'm going to hit tab. By selecting tab, what it's going to do is it's going to finish out the command. So it's going to match up anything with sync thing. And it'll show you the results of anything after that. This isn't the one I was looking for. So I'm going to hit tab again. Look at here. This is not the one I'm looking for. That's not the same. There we go. This is it. Sync thing dash windows dash setup. Mine has the one in parentheses here because I already had a copy of it. Yours shouldn't have that. It should be just sync thing dash windows dash setup dot exe. Once you've got that, add a space and then hit a forward slash and then type all users and then press enter. Then the UAC comes up again. Do you want to run this? Yes, we want to run it. Go ahead and hit yes. Here we are at the sync thing windows setup. If yours had the select install mode option, this is where you would start following along again. So from here, we're going to hit next. We'll hit next again. We can leave everything on defaults here. Go ahead and hit next. And now we can select which additional tasks we want. Do you want to start sync thing as a service automatically when the system boots? Yes, we definitely want that. So leave that checked. Start sync thing service after installation. Do we want to start it after we're done installing it? Yes. So leave that selected. And then you've got the option to create a desktop shortcut for sync thing configuration page. I would select that. So later on when we need to go in there and configure it, it makes it easier to find it. You can always delete it later on or add it if you want it later. All right. So from here, go ahead and hit next again. Getting ready to install. Go ahead and hit install now. I've selected the option to open a sync thing configuration page. So I'm going to hit finish now and it should open up that page. And it did. It just opened it in my other browser over here. So let me just copy the address and we'll throw it in over here. Oh, this PowerShell here. We can just exit out of that. We don't need that anymore. Close out this window here. We paste in the address for it and we'll click on advanced and then proceed. I'm using Chrome. So these are the options for Chrome. There we go. We're at the login page. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this now. Let's go create a folder to put our syncs into. Just going to browse to my C drive, create one here. I've already got one. I called it sync thing, but you can name it whatever you'd like. Right click, new folder, 
and we'll call it sync. All right, so if you wanted to use like a Windows desktop folder or documents or something like that, those are right protected to the user. Sync thing, when it's installed as a system, it's got its own separate user account, so it's not gonna allow it to access it. But we can get around that. We can go to that folder and add rights to it. Let me show you how to do that. So if we go to our PC, open up the C drive, go down to users. All right, here you'll see my account and then the public account and then the sync thing service account. This is the one that sync thing had created. My documents are under my account. So I'm gonna go under me. Once you found the folder that you wanna share with the other account, I'm gonna do documents. You'll right click on it and you'll go down to properties. Under properties, we're gonna look for the security tab, which is right there. Open that up. You'll see right now, the system has access to my files. My account has access to it. And then administrators also have access to it. The sync thing service account isn't listed there. To do that, underneath the group or usernames, we're gonna click edit. Below that, we'll click add. And we're gonna type in the name that we're looking for. The account we're looking for is sync thing service account. And each word starts with a capital letter. So capital S Y N C thing, capital S service, capital A, A-C-C-T. Over on the right, we'll click check names and that should find it. And it did. Once you've got it selected there, go ahead and hit okay. Now under permissions for this account, what kind of permissions do you wanna give this account? Do you want full control? Personally, I don't think it needs full control. I'm just gonna do modify so it can read and write. So select modify and then at the bottom, go ahead and hit apply. And it gives you an error saying that it's trying to apply the same settings to my music which we're not giving any access to that. So I'm okay with that. Hit continue. Same thing for my pictures. Same thing for my videos. The only one that I care about was the documents. If you wanted to give sync thing access to those other folders, then by all means, you can go in there and do the same process. Once you're done there, go ahead and hit okay and hit okay again. And while we're here, let's go copy this path. So let's open up documents, go up to the address bar up here, click in there once. We've got the whole thing. I'm gonna copy it. Now let's go back to sync thing. All right, now that we're logged in on my machine here, let me show you how to add a couple folders. We'll click add folder here. We'll go down to the folder label, give it a name. I'm gonna call this documents. Next down, we've got the folder ID. If you're gonna have it set up here on your Windows machine, then if you want an exact copy on your Unraid server, you'd put in this folder ID when you're creating the folder over there. Next down, we have folder path. Under folder path, you see that I pasted in the address that is the address from our Windows documents folder. Once you get that all set up, go ahead and hit save. Now let's say you've got a couple different Windows machines. You've got a desktop and a laptop and you want the documents to be one-to-one -one match on both machines. You're gonna have to do the same thing on both Windows machines. You have to go and set it up as a service, grant the rights like we did for this machine. So if that's something you need to do, just rewind the video, go back to the installation part, install it in the new machine, go to the user rights, add the rights. It's the same, same basic process. I don't have another Windows machine, so I can't really show you that, but let me show you the basic process on my Unraid device. All right, so let me log in real quick. So we'll just say this is my other Windows machine. We're going to go up to here and add another folder. I'm going to go to Add Folder. We're going to call this Documents. I'm going to jump back to my Windows machine here, open up Documents here, Edit. I'm going to copy this folder ID and go ahead and close it now. We'll go back to my other sync thing client, which, like I said, is on Unraid. I'm going to paste that folder ID in here. And then the folder path that I want it to go to, I'm gonna select, I'm gonna put it under backups and then a slash and call it documents. Then I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Now you'll see here that it's an unshared folder. So we need to share it with another device. So from here, we're gonna to need to grab the identifier, which we've got either here or we can go under actions and then select show ID. Either one works. This is the device identification we need. We'll just hit copy right here and it'll copy the whole thing. Hit close. Go back to our Windows device, then under Remote Devices, we will go ahead and click Add Remote Device. We're going to paste in that device ID. We're going to give it a name. This was the Unraid server. Then hit Save. Then we're going to go up to the Sharing tab. And we're going to select Documents, and then hit Save. Now you'll see the Unraid server listed here, and it's disconnected. We need to go back to the Unraid server, and it's getting a request from the Windows machine. It wants to know if we want to allow access to it. So we're gonna go ahead and hit yes, add device. This is the device ID from my Windows machine. This is the device name. Let's go over to sharing. We're gonna select the documents. That's what we wanna match up. All right, you'll see it's syncing up here. Let's jump over to my Windows machine. You'll see it's syncing there as well. We'll wait for that to finish up, and then we'll test it out real quick. All right, that's up to date. Documents are up to date. 
go over to the Unraid server. Documents are up to date there and my PC is up to date. So everything's good. I'm gonna open up my documents folder again. Guess I got a lot of stuff in there. All right, opened up the other one from the Unraid server itself. You'll see here we've got my documents on my PC. And then this one is the documents that we created inside of the backup folder on the Unraid server. And if you compare the two, everything should be the same. Adobe, Adobe, but you can see it's all one for one. We go inside one of these, let's say StarCraft here. You'll see it's the same exact files. Let's go back one level. We'll go on the Unraid server here. I'm going to create a new folder, new folder. Let's call it demo, press enter. Back over on the Windows machine, we'll refresh it. And you'll see it shows up on the Windows machine over here. Open up the one here on Windows. I'm going to create a new file here. New, we'll just do a text document. We'll say file one, press enter. Go back to our Unraid server, open up the demo folder there that we just created. Give it a moment to sync up. Once again, on the Unraid server, I'm going to create another file here. So new text document. We'll call this one file two. Save it here. Give it a moment to sync up. And there it is. So there you have it. You have sync thing now running as a Windows service. You can shut down your machine, start it back up. You don't even have to log in and it's going to start sync thing back up. There's no command prompt window that might accidentally get closed. So you should be good to go. So I hope this helped you out and got you running sync thing as a Windows service. But if you run into any problems, come join us on Discord and let's see if we can get you some help. With that being said, if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, consider becoming a Patreon. Patreon members get direct access to me on Discord, early access to my videos, and they're both ad and sponsor free. I'll leave a link down in the description. Until then, check out one of these next. And I'll see you in the next one.